Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. And today I'm excited to set up my spreads in my reading journal for January and February. I heard y'all loud and clear. Many of you were requesting more reading journal content, and I apologize. I definitely fell behind last year on filling out my reading journal in general, let alone making videos out of it. So this year I'm gonna try to be more on top of it. And my plan is to try to make a reading journal video at least every other month. So I thought I would start now with bringing you along with me as I set up all of my spreads for January and February. And this gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about all the books I read in the first two months of this year and let you in on my process. So starting with my January cover page, I decided to print out an image I took myself. This is a photo I took of my vintage typewriter, which I was assured was in working condition when I purchased it. But I must admit, I know little to nothing about typewriters, although I am very interested in them. So I have not set it up and tested it myself just yet. I'm currently stuck on the first step which is trying to find the exact model that my typewriter is so I can find the manual that went along with it. But I'm definitely struggling with figuring out exactly which year this typewriter is from, even though I have the serial number. So if you know anything about Underwood typewriters or typewriters in general, if you have any tips, let me know in the comments down below because I could definitely use a little guidance here. I think once I find the manual, I will be able to figure out a lot on my own, but I'm definitely struggling with this first step. But anyways, this is a picture I took of my typewriter and I really like how this series of photos came out. So I thought I would print one nice and big and make it the cover page for January. I do like to make a little cover page, a little artistic spread at the start of every month. It makes it a really nice experience to flip through a completed reading journal. And it's also fun to try to design them to fit the time of year so I can kind of see the progress through the year from winter into spring, summer, and fall, and then back to winter again. I'm using tea stained paper, of course, and I'll link my tutorial for how to make it yourself in the description box if you want to make some tea stained paper. I'm also using some small botanical drawings of mushrooms and plants and butterflies, my stamps, and of course, some washi tape. But with this cover page finished, it's time to flip over and create my January summary spreads. So I'm doing this the same way I have in the past. I'm going to have the covers of every book I read in the month on the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to have all my stats for the month. For those who ask, I just save the book covers from Goodreads onto my computer and then put them all in a Canva document to make sure they're all the same size before printing them out. And I also make my stats, graphs, and charts in Canva. And I know I talked about making a video last year about how I make my charts and graphs in Canva, how I source the different images I use, how I size things. If that's still a video y'all would like to see, let me know in the comments because I could definitely make that for you this year. I managed to finish 12 books in January. It was quite a prolific reading month and I read a pretty wide variety of genres from sci-fi to historical fiction, fantasy, contemporary, and some romance. And I had a pretty good spread of ratings as well. I had a couple five-star reads, actually four five-star reads, which is kind of incredible. I had a one star read and a couple two stars, three stars and four stars. I'm not going to go through every single one of my stats because that would take a while, but you can kind of see here the different things that I tend to track, like the LGBTQA plus rep in the books I'm reading, how I acquired the book, whether it has disability rep, mental illness rep or neurodiversity rep, the year it's published, some information about the author, like their nationality, their racial identity, their gender identity, whether they self-identify as part of the LGBTQIA plus community or not. And then a couple more things like my rating, the age demographic, the book type or format, and the genre. I have had some questions over the years about why I track stats, what the purpose is. And for me personally, because I can only speak for myself, I like tracking stats for two reasons. The first is just that I like data. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. I like graphs. I like charts. I like seeing data represented visually. That is interesting to me. 
And the other reason is that I've made a commitment to myself and also to you, my viewers, to continue to strive to read as diversely as possible. And so tracking my stats allows me to stay aware of a variety of areas of my reading that could be more diverse than they currently are. So whether that's reading more diversely in terms of the genres I'm picking up or reading more books by authors of color or reading more books that are not written by American authors or Canadian or British authors. All of those things are in the back of my mind all the time when I'm reading and some months I don't think about it as actively or those things don't play as big of a role because I'm either reading very specific books for a video like my Goodreads Choice Awards winners videos or maybe I'm really in a mood reading kind of month and I'm just picking things up as the whim strikes and I'm not really considering how diverse the selection really is, but continuing to track my stats as I go in this way allows me to kind of redirect if I'm going off track. If I notice that I'm really reading a lot of books of a single genre or really only books from American authors or whatever it is, then seeing that stat in black and white, or in this case in shades of brown is kind of a wake-up call after, you know, a month or two to start thinking about it again and to be more intentional with my reading choices instead of waiting till the end of the year or maybe never to actually analyze what kind of reading I'm doing. So hopefully that makes sense. And Chewy had to come do some quality control, make sure that my reading journal was up to his standards. He has very high standards. He likes to eat all the washi tape off a page if he is not impressed enough with the aesthetic quality of a spread. So luckily he gave this spread his meow of approval. <laughs> So moving on to the next spread, and this is where I'm going to start doing all my individual book entries. So I'm still sticking with the general idea that a five-star book is going to get a full page. So I can really gush about my favorite book. A four or three-star book will get half a page, and then a two or one-star book will only get a quarter. Obviously, this isn't always exactly the case because sometimes, to be honest, I just have more or less to say about a particular book and will adjust the size accordingly. I also personally really like finding some images that either are directly from the book I'm reading or remind me of some aspect of the book I'm reading to add to each spread. Again, I'm a very visual person and for me getting to flip through my reading journal and see all these images that highlight some aspect of the book that remind me of the book is a really wonderful way for me to sort of bring back the memories of the book and immerse myself in the book again, even if it's been years since I read it. So I really like to do this. So starting with the reading list, which was our book club pick for January, I gave this book five stars. I really, really liked it. This is a book about two characters who are very different people, different generations, they're from different backgrounds, and they're both struggling with something in their life. One of them has lost their wife of many years and is grieving, and the other one is struggling with her mother's mental illness and the parentification that has been placed on her shoulders. And these two unlikely people come together at a library and form this really beautiful friendship and read a specific list of books together. And there are little vignettes of other characters who are also reading these same eight books. I believe it was eight. And honestly, at first when I started reading this book, I thought it was a little cheesy. It kind of felt like book club fodder, you know? And while I have a book club and I love book clubs, I do tend to not enjoy books that are clearly written specifically for a book club demographic. Sometimes they can come across a little trite, but in this case, I think the characters really, really saved this book. They felt so real. They were so complex and compelling. Their relationships felt very genuine. And I must admit, I cried several times while reading it. I loved these characters. I loved the central narrative about these books and the ways that reading these same books and discussing them brought all these different characters together. It was just beautiful and I loved it. So I give it five stars and I decided to include the book covers of each of the books from the reading list in the book here so I could remember them. The only book I have not read from the list is A Suitable Boy. So that one is on my TBR now, although it is very long. So 
I might not get to it for a while. I should also mention, I like to start my book entries by writing down one or a couple quotes from the book in a slightly thicker nib so that it's a little bolder. You can kind of see that they're distinct from the rest of the entry before I go in and write out my full book entry, just so that I have a couple quotes included. As for the book entries themselves, they typically are just a stream of consciousness sort of review. Sometimes they're a bit of a rant, <laughs> but this is really just, you know, for me to be able to go back and flip through an old reading journal and say, oh yeah, I forgot I read that book. What, what did I think about it? And then I can read my thoughts from shortly after I finished it and have all of those feelings rush back. So moving on to the other side of the page, I have two books here, Monstrous, this is volume seven of this graphic novel series, and then Moon of the Turning Leaves, which is a sequel. And Monstrous was actually a five-star read, but because it's volume seven and these volumes are so short, I didn't feel like I really had enough to say to fill a whole page. Mostly I'm just saying, I still love all the aspects that I loved about <laughs> the earlier volumes. I still love the same characters. I'm still intrigued and invested. I am still obsessed with the art. So I decided half a page would be enough. And then Moon of the Turning Leaves was a four star read for me. So it fit nicely in a half page. The art on the monstrous entry is actually some art from this volume. I scanned my volume and printed out a little version and cropped it down. And then for Moon of the Turning Leaves, this book actually takes place in Ontario, which is where I was born and where I spent most of my life. So I picked an image of the Northern Ontario landscape in autumn. And I also included this Anishinaabe symbol because this story is about the Anishinaabe people reclaiming their indigenous identity and way of life as nature reclaims Ontario in this post-apocalyptic world. The first book reads like horror thriller in the midst of an apocalypse. It's very dramatic, very intense. And the second book definitely has that post-apocalyptic setting and does have some darker themes and some scary moments, but it definitely does not read as a thriller at all. It's much slower in its pace. It's much more tender almost. And I really enjoyed it, but I definitely went into it with the wrong expectations or I went in with expectations set from the first installment, which makes sense, but that's not what the second book was trying to do. So it took me a while to kind of reset my expectations and then I ended up really enjoying it. So just keep that in mind if you did read the first book in the duology. Second one is great, but it's very different. Moving on to my next page of book entries. I'm going to fit five books on this page. I have two rereads, which are The Valley of Horses and The Mammoth Hunters, which are both in the Clan of the Cave Bear series by Jean M. Owl. I first read these books as a very young child and have since read them approximately a million times. So they're very much comfort reads for me. Although I will say the first book in the series and then the second one, which is The Valley of the Horses, are by far the two best books in the series, in my opinion. They're my two favorites. They both get five stars from me all day, every day. They are definitely not perfect books, <laughs> but I adore them. But from the Mammoth Hunters onward, things start to decline in quality. The Mammoth Hunters is still a great book in a lot of ways, but has a very frustrating love triangle miscommunication trope at the center that is dragged out for far too long and is very irritating, but it's made up for by so many incredible characters and beautiful relationships and interactions that I adore. I've been having fun rereading these, actually listening to the audiobooks because they just are so comforting. I've read them so many times that I know them like the back of my hand. So they're really nice to listen to as I'm falling asleep, which is what I was doing when I listened to both of these in January. I would definitely recommend the series if you're a fan of historical fiction or more specifically prehistoric <laughs> fiction. I find the series absolutely fascinating. It's of course fiction, so we can't confirm or deny that this is actually what it was like for people at this time. And there is a little bit of a Mary Sue aspect with our main character who tends to invent or discover everything. <laughs> but I understand why the author chose to do it this way because we are following Ayla. So being able to see these discoveries being made firsthand is much more interesting than just hearing 
that these things are being discovered by other people off page. But if you do decide to read the series, I would definitely recommend the first and the second book and probably the third book as well. And then maybe, maybe don't continue on. I'm not sure the rest of the series is really worth the time you would have to invest. If you want to know what happens in the last three books of the series, leave a comment or DM me or something and I can just spoil it for you so you don't have to spend the time. <laughs> And then I have a couple more books here, A Kata Witch by Nnedi Okorafor. I love Nnedi Okorafor's writing. She writes Afrofuturism and she's written so many books that I have absolutely adored and has this amazing imagination and ability to create characters that feel very tangible, even in unfamiliar settings. But A Kata Witch just did not work for me as well as her other work. I think part of it is that it's aimed at a younger audience and does feel quite young, but it also just felt a little aimless to me. And I honestly just found myself quite bored. So this is part of a series. This is the first book in a series, but I won't be continuing on. It just wasn't my cup of tea. And I would rather spend my time reading some of her other books that I know I will adore. I also have another disappointing read from an author I typically really enjoy, and that was Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Shannon McGuire. I love the series this novella is from, which is the Wayward Children series, and I really loved the last book in the series. It was probably my favorite of all of them, but this one was just very blah to me. It's a very hodgepodge transition book. There are too many characters having their stories wrapped up or progressed in a way that felt rushed and spread too thin. We also get to see some really cool worlds, but only for an instant, which really sucked because they were awesome. And I wish we could have had a whole novella in those worlds instead of being teased and then having them ripped away. And then the last book that I'm including here is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I talked about Yellow Face at length in my 2023 Goodreads Choice Awards winners video. So I'll link that down below if you want to go watch that and hear my full thoughts. It was a three star read for me. It did some interesting things. It kept me engaged, but there were areas where I felt it was lacking and it didn't quite deliver what I was hoping for going into it. Moving on to my last full spread for January. So I've got my last four books here. We have Wayward, The Companion, Happy Place, and Enter Ghost. And for Wayward and Happy Place, I will refer you to my Goodreads Choice Awards video. I talk about them at length there. But for The Companion and Enter Ghost, the Companion was something I picked up on a whim. I saw it as a recommended book on Everand when I opened the app and I loved the cover. So I saved it. And when I saw how short it was, I thought, hey, I'll just listen to that today. Why not? So I went into it knowing nothing about what the book was. And it turned out to be a historical romance with LGBTQI plus characters in a poly relationship, which is all fine and great and dandy. I was actually excited when I discovered what the book was going to be, but I will say it didn't quite give me what I wanted. It was definitely leaning more towards erotica, I would say, in my experience anyway. I'm definitely not an expert in terms of where that line is between romance and erotica, but it did feel like there was a lot less relationship development and sort of slow build to the sex scenes than other romance that I'm used to, even other very short romance with more of a novella page count. It just felt like we rushed a little too quickly into the sex and the sex was very explicit, which is fine. I liked the characters. I was intrigued by their dynamics. I really liked the idea of exploring what life would be like in this time period for trans people and how their relationship dynamic was going to develop as a poly relationship with some complicated dynamics and history between two of them. And we just didn't get that because so much of the limited page count was dedicated to several sex scenes, which again is fine, but I just wanted more relationship development. You know, I wanted a little bit more coziness and cuteness and romance and it wasn't really there. And then the last book that I'm writing an entry for here is Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Isabella Hamad is a Palestinian British author. And this book is about a Palestinian British actress who goes back to Palestine to stay with her sister and gets roped into this production of Hamlet. And it's really a book about what life is like in Palestine and allows us to look at Palestine from the eyes of someone who is both connected to it, but also a bit 
of an outsider, having lived in England for most of her life, with yearly visits home as a child and then many years of absence from Palestine as an adult. And I just absolutely loved this book on so many levels. I loved how Isabel Hamad explored the intricacies of not only the political situation in Palestine, but also relationships between characters. And there was an extra punch with this book because I am a former actor. I went to theater school. I've always loved Shakespeare. So reading about an actress main character and getting to experience that dynamic when you start to bond with a cast and that feeling of family that you get so quickly with your castmates when you're putting on a production and that feeling of you against the world, you against every challenge, which is only amplified by the fact that they're putting on this production in the West Bank. It was just incredible. I thought it was beautifully written, explored so many themes that are so deeply relevant right now, and I would highly recommend it. I thought it was gorgeous. So that brings us to the end of January, which means it's time to make my February cover page. I decided to choose a wintry image for this cover page since my last one didn't really show the season very well. So I have my what looks to be a small church in the winter with snow all around, a bit of a sunrise or a sunset in the background, and then of course some bookish images as well because this is a reading journal. And moving on to my summary spread, I have the 12 books I read in February on the left. I did read 12 books exactly in both January and February, which is kind of funny to me. Both heavier reading months than usual for me, and part of that was reading so many books for the Goodreads Choice Awards video that I made, and quite a few of the books I read in February were books for that video, so I will once again direct you to that one if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts on all of these. And then, of course, I have my February stats once again. I will say that my stats in February were not where I would want them to be. I definitely did better in January with hitting my various goals, but because 10 of the 12 books I read in February were specifically for that video, so they weren't necessarily books that I was choosing to read for my own reasons. Not all of them are books I would have read otherwise, so I'm being a little gentler on myself for not doing great with my stats in February because it was an outlier of a month with this specific reading goal. So getting started on my individual book entry pages, starting with our book club pick for January, which was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is a book that's been on my TBR for a while, but I just hadn't gotten around to it. I was a bit concerned about the YA-ness of it all, but I was very pleasantly surprised by this book. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't perfect. I ended up giving it four stars. There were definitely a couple things about it that I felt nitpicky about, but overall, this was a much better book than I expected it to be, and I enjoyed it so much that in March I very quickly read the second and the third books in the trilogy and enjoyed them quite a bit as well. So if you're looking for a dark academia fantasy novel in a school setting and you don't mind that the characters are teenagers, I would really recommend this. It has some nice diversity in the characters. It has some really lovely relationships, especially the main character's relationship with her mother. I've just found very touching. And it's a really interesting world and some very cool and terrifying monsters. So I would highly recommend. I also read The Plains of Passage, which is book four in the Clan of the Cave Bear series. And I will repeat that by this point in the series, things are really going downhill. This book in particular is incredibly boring and repetitive. I gave it three stars because there are some really interesting characters and groups of people that we meet in this book that I really enjoy. But outside of those very short periods of time where the main characters are with some of these groups of people and we get to see the dynamics and meet them and learn more about all of their varying cultures and social hierarchies and architecture and so on and so forth. The rest of this book, an absolute slog. And then we have In the Lives of Puppets, which was included in my Goodreads Choice Awards video, so go check that out. To be very brief, I gave this book three stars. It was very forgettable for me and felt very young for my taste. It just didn't really do what I would want it to do with the thematic content, with the characters it had, with the world it had established. I think there was a lot of potential to do something very cool and it just 
left that on the table. Moving on to my next spread here, and I'm including six book entries on this page, all of which I talked about in my Goodreads Choice Awards video. I realized just right now as I'm recording this voiceover that The Housemaid is actually not a winner of the Goodreads Choice Awards, but I read it for that video because it was the first book in a series and the second book won the award, so I'm gonna have to go and try to remove that little Goodreads Choice Awards icon without ripping the page because it shouldn't be there. But anyways, I talk about all these books at length in that video, so I will direct you there. And you can kind of see from my ratings here that I felt pretty meh or even less than meh about all of these books for a variety of reasons. My two favorites on this page were probably being Henry and Check and Mate, both of which could have had a higher rating if I were a different kind of person <laughs> than I am. It's less so issues with the books themselves that landed them at three stars and more so that they aren't exactly my cup of tea, whereas the other books on this page have a lower rating, more so to do with the books themselves than me as a reader. Although who I am as a reader is obviously still a huge factor in the rating. And moving on to my final book entry spread for this video, which is for a couple more books I read for my Goodreads Choice Awards video, Divine Rivals, Ninth House, and Hellbent. So again, check out that video for my full reviews. But all of these were a very pleasant surprise. Divine Rivals was very, very close to getting five stars. Really, it was just how abrupt the ending was that lowered my rating, but I really loved it and I'm definitely going to keep reading in the series. And then Ninth House very much pleasantly surprised me. It also got four stars. Hellbent was a little less satisfying for me, a little less tightly plotted, a little more meandering, repetitive, just lacking focus a bit. So for me, it was more of a three star read, but still a very enjoyable read. So again, check out that video for my full reviews, but three books that I definitely enjoyed and would recommend if you're a fan of fantasy and looking for a new book to read. Now that I've finished all of my January and February spreads, it's time to go back to the beginning of my reading journal and fill out my yearly spreads so that I stay up to date. So starting with my 2024 reading tracker, I'm just using my Tombow in 990 to fill in the boxes for the number of books I've read so far, which is 24. I'm also filling out my 2024 reading goals and my book bingo spreads. I've actually gotten close to or completed a couple of my reading goals already. My BIPOC MCs goal is completed. My LGBTQI plus MCs is almost completed. I'm halfway to my goal of reading books with disability, mental illness, and or neurodiversity rep. So not doing too badly here to start the year off. And then my book bingo, I'm making a little less progress. I only have one square that I can fill in, which is a book about books. Some of these prompts are highly specific and many of them are very much outside of my normal comfort zone with reading. I'm definitely going to have to put in more conscious effort if I wanna get bingo this year. And the last spread I was going to fill in was my reading around the world spread, but then I realized that I didn't actually have any new countries to fill in so far this year. The books I read from other countries are from countries I've already read from in past years. I realized that what would make most sense would be for me to go on my computer and fill in all the countries I read in a past year in Photoshop and print it out and then fill in any new countries I read from this year using probably a colored pencil in a similar sort of beige shade so that I can easily distinguish between countries I read from in the past and new countries that I'm checking off the list in 2024. And with that, we have finally come to the end of this video. This felt like a bit of a marathon took quite a bit of time to create all these spreads and took even longer, it feels like, to edit all the footage. But I hope you enjoyed this. Do let me know in the comments if you would like me to do this kind of a video every other month or so to keep you updated on the books I'm reading, to keep you updated on how my reading journal is going and all my goals. This is definitely a bit of a labor intensive video to make, to do two months in one, but I feel like it's a little more doable than trying to guarantee a reading journal every single month because there are some months where I just have 
other things that I'm really excited about making for you. So let me know your thoughts. Are there other reading journal videos you would like to see from me, including a video where I talk about how I find the images I use and how I resize them, how I make my stats, all of those little technical details. And if you have any book related video requests in general, reading vlogs you want me to do, topics you want me to do a deep dive into, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. I would love to try to make the kinds of videos that you want to see from me. And with that, I think I'm going to get going. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I will see you very, very soon in my next one. Bye friends. Also, I should mention that I provided this exact map that I use to my patrons as a printable, just as a bonus, because I thought they might like to use it. So if you are looking for a map to use in your own reading journal in the same way that I am here, that is something that is available to my patrons if you join the Patreon.